It's nine o'clock. It's a Saturday morning. That can only mean one thing. Oh, yes. It's time for the Monster Magic Saturday Show. Let's do this. Wake up. It's a beautiful morning. Feel the sun shining for your eyes. Woo-hoo-hoo. Good morning. It's Saturday. It's the start of the weekend. And I really hope... You've got your cup of tea or a cup of coffee and maybe uh, some toast, and some peanut butter, and you're settling down for a little half hour of uh, some magic reviews. Yes, and I've got some corkers today and one that I've been really, really struggling with. And also um, one that was a bit of a blast from the past as well. So it's a nice variety. But first up, let me get the one that I've been struggling with out of the way, and that is Stroop by Man and TCC. Um, Stroop, uh, you might be familiar with what the idea of a Stroop test is because Penguin released um, a trick based on the Stroop test um, a couple of years ago. I think it is now. Um, not a trick I particularly liked. I sort of thought that the eight card brainwave um, is just as strong and slightly less confusing. Um, so the idea of a Stroop test is that you'd have um, a word, so a colour written in letters, but the colour of the letters are different to what the colour of the word spell is. So you'd have green, but it'd be written in red ink, for example, and someone you challenge someone to say either the colour um, of the word rather than what the word says. I hope that makes sense. It'll all become clear when I show you what you get in the box. So the idea behind this, there's several phases to this routine or several routines that you can do with this trick. Um, you can either just demonstrate that you are particularly good at the Stroop test. So they can try it and uh, they'll stumble on the words, they'll stumble on the colours. It is difficult and they won't be very quick at it and it'll take a surprising amount of cognitive energy for the poor blossoms to get through the page. You, however, can just reel them off. No matter which page they turn to, you can reel them off very, very quickly. Um, and don't don't dust over that. That is a quite an impressive feat because you have just they have just seen how difficult it is. And you can also predict what they can read out the colours on the page, for example, and you can predict what the page number is. They can turn to any page and you can tell them what colour they're thinking of. Um, so there's an element of either sort of a, a good um, a memory test where you, where you know all the, they, they give you the page number and you can reel off all of the colours or there is a more mentalism where they simply just think of the first colour and you can tell them what the page is and so on um, or there's the demonstration. You get two booklets, um, one is blank um, for you can customise it I guess, I'm not entirely sure what you do with this one, um, I'll come to why in a minute and then there is the actual Stroop book itself. And you can see it's got uh, the words, uh, the colours written, and they are in different colours. And this is really what you get. Um, it doesn't look very organic, I'll give you that. But um, that's absolutely fine. And the reason it is done like this is because one of the principles involved. Um, the there's no real demonstration that I could find on the tutorial. He hints at one, but I couldn't find it. Uh, maybe I missed it. Um, I'll have to go back and have a look. Um, so the other issue that I've really got, what makes this so frustrating is that I do feel this has some power. It has some merit. It could be um, really good um, for all I know. Um, but I haven't really um, done it on anyone yet because the tutorial took me so long to get through to figure out and understand the method and what on earth man was talking about. Uh, he obviously doesn't talk, talk, speak any English, which is absolutely fine. Uh, my Chinese is pretty dreadful too. Um, but the subtitles are... <sighs> They are a real, real struggle. Um, there's lots and lots of spelling mistakes, and often there's no gap between the words. So you end up with a sort of stream of colours as the subtitles, so like blue and green, yellow, brown, black, whatever. Um, but they'll all be spelt wrong as well. And there's, there was just like this real knack of constantly having to pause the tutorial 
to read the subtitles and figure out what he was saying and whether or not he was talking about the colour of the words or the actual word itself. Um, I did manage to get through it. I have got it. It's a pretty good, uh, clever method, certainly for the first phase of showing how good you are at doing it yourself. That is um, brilliantly easy. Um, and then he talks about how you know um, the order of the, the words, the next color they might be thinking of, and so on. There is a crib that goes with this, um, which you probably will need you unless you can commit. Um, there's a little bit of memory work otherwise. Um, that crib's not very small, and he suggests that you stick it somewhere uh, that, that you can see it. But um, all of those things still quite ostentatious because really you've got the sort of band of band of color um, hidden somewhere. And unless no one sees it, it's not the sort of thing that can hide in plain sight, as far as I'm concerned, because you're talking about colors and you've got something very colorful on your wrist. Unless you mask it, perhaps by having lots and lots of colors on the wrist. Um, I did think of the idea of having um, some rainbow bands, uh, which would be uh, a nice little crib as well. Um, if you do some rubber band magic before or afterwards, you could probably get away with that. Um, it's good. It would be good for stage. It would be good um, uh, for for pilot and close up. But it's a real, real struggle to understand the method. And I was getting really, really frustrated. There's a marking system involved as well, which is how you know what page they're on. Um, that isn't the easiest system either. Um, and in fact, just looking at it, I think I can find I can think of a much more simpler way of doing it. If you're patient enough to sit through the tutorial, um, then great. Uh, personally, I'm not sure it's worth the effort at the moment. Um, I do like the, the the mentalism aspect of it, of being able to tell them what colour they're thinking of um, without um, any them saying anything at all. They can simply, you can just, or you can ask them to think of a colour on, on the page. So ask them to think of the first colour on the page and you can tell them what that is without them saying anything. Um, that little mind reading bit, I'm sure, is uh, really powerful. Um, but otherwise, it is, um, it's a lot of hard work at the start and you really have to believe in the trick. Um, I'm not sure I do, but it's $24.99 and that is Stroop by TCC and Man. <laughs> And now it's time for what is certainly the hottest trick this week by a long shot. It is Mini Book Pro by uh, Noel Qualter and uh, Roddy McGee and their new company, Trick Trick Boom. Um, uh, I do know Roddy. Uh, um, I do know Roddy. I do know Noel as well. I know Noel much better than I know Roddy. Um, I've met them both several occasions. Uh, I like them both. Um, and I knew uh, that Noel was developing this um, for over a year now. I've seen it through various um, stages uh, of its development. Um, so I'm going to try and be as uh, honest and um, as unbiased as possible. But do bear in mind, I know Noel very well. I know a lot about this product just because I've spoken to him about it um, over the year. Uh, this is brilliant. Now, I know I've just said I'm going to be unbiased, but I do honestly, honestly think it is. And um, some of that comes from the insight and the tutorial that Noel gives. And I'll talk about that later as well. But let me just tell you what you get in the box, no, I won't tell you what get you in the box. I'll tell you what the effect is. So you start telling them about how you've recently bought a new laptop and you want to show it to them. So you ask them to go to the web page where you bought it from on their phone. You can do it on your phone if you want on their phone and you show them the laptop you bought. You say, there's one problem. I didn't realize that that picture was actually to scale and you pull the laptop out of their phone and you show that it's actually uh, a titchy, titchy, tiny little thing. You don't explain that it is really, really powerful and it's very, very good at finding playing cards. They uh, select a card, they sign a card, the card gets lost in the deck and they program their card into the miniature laptop. The laptop then tells them where that card is in the deck However, when they uh, deal down, they find that their card isn't in the deck at all. The laptop's got it all wrong, but no, 
wait when they now return to look at the laptop to check whether it got it right or wrong, it turns out that that miniature laptop has in fact turned into their signed card. And it's a brilliant moment when they unfold it and they actually see their signature on that card. Uh, it's a terrific plot and one of the best things about it is it will stay in people's memories. It's a very clear thing to say, yep, uh, I, I pulled a laptop out of my phone amazing piece of visual magic. I know it's magic that we've seen a lot as magicians. We're kind of used to um, seeing that, but lay people, no way. That is really, really strong. It's a powerful trick all in itself. So they say that they've, they, they, they saw you pull it out of their phone and then they found they didn't find their card, but it materialized into their card. Don't forget, they've touched this laptop, they've held it and they've played with it. It is very, very strong, powerful stuff. And because of the plot and the storyline, there are some brilliant moments that you can really, really engage your participants with. When you ask someone to hold that miniature laptop, it is super cute and they really, really do like it. And they've got no idea where it came from. And then you ask them to type their card in to that uh, little laptop. And this is brilliant. This is, you can be as playful as you like with this, but your participants, especially if you've got one um, who might have had a drink, they love it. They will play along and they really, really get into it and, um, it, you know, encourage them uh, to give this laptop as much life as possible. To, to anthropomorphize it, I think, is a, is a term, a bit like they do with Tiny Plunger and things like that. Um, so it's a lot of fun for the participants already and they're joking along and it's just got this nice playful air about it and then you do the powerful card magic and when that card when they unfold that card and uh, the, the the laptop and it is their card it is super super strong you can do it in their hands you can actually put uh, the card into the or the card slash laptop into their hands if you want. For me, you need some big cojones to do that. Um, you have graduated big time from the School of Mini Book Pro when you start doing that. Um, but putting it down on the table is, is, is almost as strong, to be honest. Um, it feels like it's been materialized there. When I first got it, um, I was very tempted to start doing sort of spellbound routines with it and practicing about how I could make all the switches and things like that. Um, but this doesn't really want a visible switch in it in any way. Um, it wants to be sitting on the table being completely innocent. And as far as everybody else, it's still that original laptop. And then it changes and there's no moment of it changes. It's, it's just like it's been there the entire time, almost like uh, a Star Trek um, Scotty is sort of transmorphed in, into um, the playing card. The tutorial is three hours long and they'll promise me there will be no waffle on it, but I think there's a smidge. I think you probably could have got it down to two and a half if you were stricter with yourself. And the reason it is so long um, when I did discuss this with Noel, is that he's thought about everything that um, anyone from um, a novice um, to an expert might want in a tutorial. And it's really well chaptered and it's incredibly thorough. And he talks about things like, um, so the gimmicks, for example. Well, let me show you the gimmicks. Well, let me show you, show you what you get. First of all, it comes in this lovely box um just like uh, um a well-known uh computer manufacturer style box um absolutely brilliant and this is uh the darling the darling little mini book pro um it is really strong um it is stuff i have um i have dropped a few and they've survived but it is super cute it looks brilliant and the uh gimmicked cards that you get uh come in here um they're really well printed it's not um it's not bicycle card stock um but they are really really good uh quality so and they'll fit nicely in your deck and uh noel even talks about so if i was talking about the tutorial earlier I mean, he's sort of everything. So the Pantone, I think the black's probably perfect, but the Pantone on the red, getting them to match bicycle cards uh, as accurately as possible because he feared 
um, that uh, some magicians might worry that a spectator might notice um, that the colours or the pips or whatever were slightly off from a regular deck of bicycle cars. Um, there's absolutely no chance of doing that, even if it was miles off. So Dole, no, but Noel has thought about it and got it as accurate as possible. Um, they've all got um, pips in the middle, so you get various... Uh, you, I have to get, uh, I can't remember how many different variations, four or five or something, different variations of cards, six maybe, I don't know, can't remember. Um, but the pips show you which orientation the card needs to be for when you're doing the said moves, and I'll run through all of that as well. Uh, it isn't um, as hard as you'd imagine for a trick that is this strong. Uh, you need uh, to force a card, and they'll run through simple ways of forcing a card, and you need to uh, be able to control a card, which Noel runs through as well. These, again, are all chaptered, so if you are an experienced card magician, you don't need to watch it. You can just uh, skip through it completely. Uh, so that's all covered, and the slides aren't difficult at all. The big one is uh, how you get it into the shape of the uh, laptop which is a well-known card move and this is made so easy it is often a card move that people shy away from they feel it's a big movement they feel it makes a lot of noise in order to do this you need to uh, treat the cards slightly you need to score them as it were to get it to be um, as laptop-like as possible so there's a little bit of stuff that you need to do at home first to to get these gimmicks uh uh to work accurately so there's a little bit of scoring to do which roddy runs through uh roddy's an expert at making gimmicks and he tells you everything you need to know and because of that that makes the move silent quick and accurate which is possibly the biggest fears of it all and the big movement um they are you are doing this at a completely misdirected moment. So you've either got someone playfully tapping in the name of the card. You can even turn your back to go, look, I'm not going to look. I don't want to don't don't catch you hitting any of those keys. So you can turn away and do that great back turning ruse if you like. It's not necessary because everyone is focusing and playing along with the cheeky little laptop. There are lots of performances on the tutorial as well with commentary over the top. So you get to know exactly what's happening and what they're thinking at every time. They deal with, they both talk, Roddy, about, you know, if someone notices that it's not, uh, that it's already changed before you want to do the big uh, reveal, how to handle that. And in my experience, people haven't even, even if they notice that the laptop is now not a laptop, they, because they haven't, they don't know the plot, they don't piece it together anyway. So it's not like you've got to rush to the denouement in, in any real way. It may perhaps speed it up a little bit, but um, there's a big leap from them seeing that it's no longer a laptop to it being actually their signed card. A magician might put it together quicker uh, than the layperson, but as far as the layperson is concerned, it sort of almost means nothing. It's just, just a bit of confusion. Um, but it doesn't happen very often. Certainly if you put it down on the table, if you put it in their hands and you're being really brave, um, then uh, just choose your participant wisely. They give a couple of different handlings. There's Noel's handling, there's Roddy's handling. Um, very similar, just um, how the, the laptop is switched is possibly the only difference. Um, I kind of like both. Uh, hard to tell who's got the best handling out of them if they're being competitive about it. I don't know. Um, and there's also a non-signed version, which is slightly easier, um, still really good, still fun, um, but you really do want to be aiming to have it as a signed card because hopefully you're thinking that they're going to take this card away from it. It's got a funny back design. that They can fold it back up into a computer, and if it's got their signature on it, they're more likely to show it to more people. It's a good, strong, commercial, not too difficult to do, card magic that will long linger in people's memories. It's a smidge under £40. Um, but let's not take my word for it. Let's see what the G thinks. Alex! What the G thinks. Oh my God, that's brilliant. Amazing. The best trick you've ever done. Can it tell me where my glasses are? 
That is Mini Book Pro by Noel Qualter, Roddy McGee from Trick Trick Boom. And now we have Vanish by Justin Miller. Some various other people's collaborated on it and Illusionist. Um, this really, really is uh, giving the trick of the week a run for its money because I think this is absolutely fantastic as well. Um, uh, it is basically uh, a vanishing deck. It's based very much on Paul Harris's version that came out a very long time ago and was a real, real game changer. Um, you Basically, you have a card selected from a deck of cards and you say, I'm going to make it appear on top of the deck. And you go to put the, the, the deck, um, the card back in the deck. And you go, no, I'll, tell you what, I'll put it in my pocket and make it appear back onto the top of the deck. Then the deck vanishes and you've just holding their card and from the pocket, either you or they can pull out all of the cards. The deck vanishes and goes to your pocket and you're left just holding the card that they selected. Super strong, quick, very, very visual and easy to do as well. Um, you might be thinking, it's very similar to uh, Envelope uh, by um, Envelope 2.0 um, by Chris Tucci and Penguin. Um, and it is. Um, that was also, I feel, very much influenced by Paul Harris as well. What the difference is, this is really, really versatile in comparison. Um, if you have already got Envelope, um, then perhaps you're not going to want both but you can do a lot more with this um, than just the one trick that you can do with envelope. Um, Justin's teaching, um, he's got this marvelous stream of consciousness going on um, that I did begin to tire of. It was really, really interesting. Um, you probably want uh, to take it chapter by chapter so you can have a little bit of a break. Um, he's very much, um, unedited and he's got a lot of insights and a lot of thoughts a lot of tips that he throws in um even just a way of not having you know how to how visually how to have it um not to have your table too crowded not to have any distraction lots lots and lots of really really um interesting thoughts and tips and subtleties um but it's this constant stream and sometimes you just wanted to tell you how to do the routine um he goes in a lot about um, when to do um, the big move, which is, let's face it, a ditch. You do start off holding a deck of cards in your hand, um, and then you have to somehow get that deck of cards into your pocket. And he uh, gives various examples and lots of performances of how he's done it, when he's choosing the moment, and when the moment happens. And in the great words of Max Malini, um, just wait. Uh, the ideal moment will happen. It will occur quite naturally. Um, and it's often something going on that you can, uh, they can distract themselves with. Um, and that is really, really interesting. And that's a great uh, way of learning how to make a big move is just to wait for that moment and then go for it. Sometimes you can create the moment. Sometimes you just have to hang on in there. You actually get uh, two uh, gimmicks which is brilliant and these are really well made um, apparently by Justin himself um, they're super strong they're super durable um, I've been playing with mine a lot and it still looks as good as new um, and you can have a lot of fun with it because you're sort of vanishing a deck there are various routines and there's a nicely chaptered tutorial um, first you have uh, Justin going through um, three or four routines that he does. He's got um, a card from a box. Um, you do have to force the card, by the way, obviously, because you want the values to match your gimmick. Justin does teach uh, the forces and the controls and the subtleties around those controls really well. Uh, so you've got no problem there if you don't already know how to force a card. Um, and then obviously you've got the deck vanishing. Um, but he also teaches uh, a sort of a trick with a quiver K where you just have um, the card in the box and the deck vanishes from the box essentially um, and just one card is left in the box which is really nice um, really really visual I really did enjoy it um, he also teaches uh, uh, Paul Harris's sandwich routine using this gimmick 
uh, which is also really good. He's turned it into a two-phase routine, which is really smart thinking. And then you move on to the other people. And yes, Craig Petty uh, is involved. He makes tricks better, even needs a seat. And Craig's routines are really, really strong, brilliant, fun routines. He's got um, one of them is called Cased, which is a great opener for um, a card trick where you literally force all of the cards back into the card box, leaving just their selection. Terrific idea. And then he's got one um, which um, uses a digital force bag by uh, Nick Einhorn and Craig. And that is also really, really good. Basically, um, they're thinking you have a handkerchief over your um, hand and you go, uh, I want you to think of an object that a magician might use. Uh, and that they, they use, uh, that's forced on them. They, you take away the handkerchief, so you've got a deck of cards. That's wrong. That well, they weren't thinking of a deck of cards, and you go, oh, oh, and then you make the deck of cards vanish, and in their place is whatever the object is that you forced on them. Absolute genius. I think what Craig realised here is that with this gimmick, this gimmick is very easy uh, to get rid of. So um, you don't necessarily have to have um, a card hanging around at the end, and any sort of small. Uh, object that's less than a size of a deck of cards um, that you're easy to hold to play around with whatever you've got at home or whatever's in the shops um, should work uh, and because of the silk handkerchief and everything else there's a very nice cleanup that Craig does um, I think it's a really really nice routine that one um, and visually uh, brilliant and a great idea for the gimmick Adam Wilbur's also on the tutorial um, he uses uh, David Regal's uh, disposable deck as well um, terrific little routine. You've got Greg Wilson on there as well, talking about misdirection. Um, it's a real project in itself, which hints at the versatility, versatility, versatility of um, of this gimmick. Um, it is um, a really, really brilliant trick. Um, I do really, really like it. It's forty one ninety nine, but you do get these um, gimmicks that really will last. I think they are really, really super strong. Um, I could just highly, highly recommend it. They're literally vanishing a deck of cards in front of their eyes. And you can either have some, an object left behind, as Craig does, or it's just turned into their selection. Um, it is absolutely brilliant. It is Vanish by Justin Miller. <coughs> and now we have Glance 3.0 by Steve Thompson. Um, as far as I can tell, the difference between this and 2.0 is the magazines are slightly different. Um, if you're not familiar with Glance, it is a book test, but with two magazines. Uh, so instead of having to carry around um, a big, thick novel or two novels, you just carry around the magazines. And the magazines look like the sort of business magazines, a little bit like um, Newsweek, um, or the sort of magazines uh, that you get at an airport or on a plane, which is what I used to say they were when I used to perform Glance 2.0. Um, the magazines look completely legit. Um, this is sealed, so um, I don't really want to open it because then I won't be able um, to sell it. Um, so I don't really... What should I tell you? Shall I open it? Tell you what, I'm going to open it, and uh, I'll have a little competition. and. Um, We'll uh, we'll go we'll for someone to win it because it will be open. Um, this is how good the magazines are. Um, one's called Global. One's called The Insider. Uh, they're a standard size. They are. Let me show you one at a time. They're really well printed. Um, no one's going to be reading the articles. They do make sense. Uh, whether they're <laughs> whether they're factually accurate or entertaining is another thing. Um, you know, visually. Um, brilliant. Uh, there's nothing that anyone would suspect in these at all. Um, lots of adverts that look um, completely legit. The images look legit, and there's um, lots and lots of text. And like I say, you get two of them uh, so that someone can choose whichever one they want. Um, very, very well produced. Um, originally with Glance, there was this idea that you might want to take the staples out, change the covers, restaple them, or whatever. I don't think anyone ever did. Um, I certainly didn't. 
uh, and there's no reason to. So I think Andy sort of dismissed that, vanishing Inga sort of dismissed that idea as being a way to go. Um, and yeah, it works pretty much the same way um, as uh, Tim uh, Kamilovich's uh, Mother of All Book Tests. So he basically asked them to choose a word in either magazine and you tell them what that word is. As with Mother of All Book Tests, there is a small bit of memory involved. Um, there is a crib here too, which might refresh you if you haven't performed it in a while, but the, the sort of uh, level of memory is titchy, titchy, tiny. And um, I'd be surprised if you ever really um, forget it once you've remembered it. It's a bit like learning Latin at school. I still know my Amoa Mass for Matt, um, despite wishing I didn't. There's a small bit of fishing, um, as with Mother of All Book Tests. Um, Steve Thompson has um, a nice way of doing it that uh, gets around um, the uh, issue with uh, Mother of All Book Tests that sometimes ended in a negative. It still seems quite negative. Um, uh, Andy Gladwin, who is on doing the tutorial, has a nice way of making it feel that um, you're never wrong, um, which is really nice and quite clever. Um, there's also a routine that uh, gives you sort of like a tossed out deck feel where you throw a few magazines out into the audience. And that's really good for filling a whole theatre um, and with just a few magazines as well. So a really sort of um, pack small, plays big style routine. It is also one of the cheapest book tests out there as well um, for no lack of power. Um, it is a Glance 3.0 by Steve Thompson. And last but not least, we have A Blast from the Past uh, by Cameron Francis, um, Nothing But the Truth. Um, I used to do this, God, it feels like it was 10 years ago. Um, it was one of my favorite packet tricks for a long time. It is a lie detector plot. Uh, you have someone thinking of a card, they can say whether it's red or black, and you deal through the cards and the the card that you end up on either says lie or true on it. Um, really, really good. They could they then go through um, whether it's um, a court card or a spot card, whether it's the jack, the queen or the king and so on. And they can lie or tell the truth. It's really nice. It's really, really playful. And it's very subtle and very easy to do. Um, it used to be a DVD, I believe, but now it's all online. So you don't have to worry about having a DVD player. And you have these beautifully printed cards um, with your uh, lie detector printed on the back. And a little bit like Minibook Pro, you can you can invest this and play along uh, with how, you know, whether this is a genuine lie detector, a little bit of electronics and so on as you wish. Um, and really it's pretty much self-working. At the end, to show that they've all changed into their selection, there is uh, an Elmsley, or perhaps um, the all round subtlety, depending on how you want to do it. Two slides that um, are not difficult, maybe take a little bit of practice, um, but you'll certainly get them down if you don't already know them. And it's a lot of power for just those two simple slides. What is really nice is you never really say how many cards you've got. Um, and the fact that um, they fill in the blanks quite a lot in their mind. So you never show that these cards have all, all say true or all say lie. But when you're doing the trick, they are thinking that you, you must have five or six cards that all say true or lie on. They have no idea that one of them is going to be their card, yet alone all of them is going to be their card. And that is what is so powerful, the shock, when not only have you got one of the, one card that has turned into their card, but they all have is really, it's, it's just, it's just an amazing trick. 
you do have to uh, force the card. Uh, Cameron uses the crosscut force, which is a brilliant uh, way of doing it. And it introduces the deck of cards as well. And Cameron uses this as an opener, as did I, in the way that you're going to get to know your audience and whether they are truthful or lies. The lie detector is a great um, opening premise, and it's a fun way of suggesting that you're going to get to learn a little bit about your participants. Um, for 2099. I just love it. Um, I'm really, really pleased to see it again. And it is uh, Nothing But The Truth by Cameron Francis. And now it must be competition time because um, someone can win Glance 3.0 by Steve Thompson, uh, which, uh, as you just heard, is really, really good. Um, I am going to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube. Uh, this week um, by Wednesday. Um, the videos will be going up on Facebook rather than YouTube. But the question is, or what you need to do is to leave in your comments below this video is how long you think I'm going to take to solve the Rubik's Cube. Now, to be honest, I've got no idea whether I can solve it in three minutes, five minutes or 10 minutes yet. Um, so just put down a time um, to the nearest second I don't know how close this is going to be. Um, I've got, I haven't got a Scooby-Doo either. Um, but um, I will tell you now that I can, um, I'll tell you how good I am at the Rubik's Cube. I can solve one side of the Rubik's Cube um, with that top layer as well. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a learning curve. You can follow me um, throughout until Wednesday on uh, the Monster Magic Facebook page. Um, you can always come back and leave your comments on this video after you've watched a few to see how I'm getting on, um, a few videos on Facebook to see how I'm getting on, if you want. Um, but do leave a comment on here. Um, if you leave them on the Facebook page, um, I might include them if I'm generous enough, but it might make Clayton, who is uh, the winner, a little bit harder. So please try and comment on this video with your time. So minute and second, um, or it could be hours, minutes, seconds, let's face it. And uh, whoever's nearest, to the time that I take on Wednesday to solve the Rubik's Cube in its entirety will win Glance 3.0. <laughs> and that's it for the show, I'm afraid. Um, I'm sure your tea's gone cold by now. Go down and make yourself a fresh pot. And don't forget, this weekend, pick up a piece of magic, maybe something from your bottom drawer, and go out and entertain people with what is the best hobby in the world. Bye-bye.